Hello, Tabernacle family, and Merry Christmas. We are here in the lovely Gradberg home in Palmer, Texas, and we're so thankful that you've chosen to worship with us today. So whether you are out traveling today, visiting family, or you're at home next to the fireplace with your family, we're so thankful for you. Pastor Zach is going to present a message today, and our Tabernacle worship team is going to sing a couple of carols, and we would love for you to sing along with us. This first song is called, It's Christmas. holiday season. Christmas is one of my favorite times of the year. I love the music. I love the twinkling lights. I love spending time with my family and friends. Tabernacle, what are some of your favorite holiday traditions? Maybe you like spending time at the fireplace singing songs or taking photographs with uh, your family in pajamas. We'd love to hear from you. Send us some of your photos and let us know in the comment section what are some of your favorite holiday traditions. We have a few photographs from you already. We have Mike Harrison and his family. 
We have the McLaughlin family. We have the Hildreth family. And then we have Colby and Jesse. We have Matthias and V. And we have Pastor Crook and his family. Make sure and send us some of your photographs. We'd love to see you. As we continue with worship, I'd like to lead us in a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for this beautiful day and everything that it represents. God, today, as we celebrate all the wonderful things about Christmas, God, may we never forget the true meaning of Christmas, and that is you. God, so today we honor you, and we pray that everything that we do brings honor and glory to your beautiful name.
Merry Christmas, church. What a blessing for us to be able to celebrate our Savior's birth today. If you have your Bible, we're going to be in the book of Luke chapter 2 as we're wrapping up our This Is Christmas series. And as we think about who Jesus is and what he has done for us, what a blessing for us to celebrate his birth together. I'm going to read just the first 12 verses of Luke chapter 2. And God's word says this. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. The first registration took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So everyone went to be registered, each to his own town. Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family line of David to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. Then she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him tightly in cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the city of David, a Savior was born for you, who is the Messiah, the Lord. So we think about that. Jesus and his birth, and we celebrate it. Oh, it's bringing great joy to all of us. And yet, it starts from pretty humble beginnings. Do you notice what it says in verse 7? It says that when she gave birth to her firstborn son, she wrapped him, t- wrapped him tightly in cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Mary and Joseph were so insignificant at this time that when they traveled to Bethlehem for the census, there was no room. No one cared enough to provide them a place to stay. They had to go out to a stable. And that's where she gave birth. When we think about it, I'm thankful that God chooses those that we might consider insignificant. We might consider kind of down and out. And he did that with Mary and Joseph. You know, as I think about it, my my birthday, June 30th, I'm 1984. I'm exactly six months older than LeBron James. Now, LeBron James is born December 30th. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but I'm a little surprised that my invitation to LeBron James's birthday party has yet to come in the mail. I, I keep waiting and hoping, and yet it's just not there. And that is Mary and Joseph. Just like I'm not getting that invite to LeBron James's birthday party, Mary and Joseph were not even significant enough to get room at the end, there's no guest room available for them. But for all of us, I think many of us can relate to that. And what God does constantly throughout this story is he uses those people that we wouldn't necessarily expect. It's not a celebrity. It's not a king. It's not a ruler that Jesus is proclaimed to first. Born in a stable, and then angels show up, and who do they show up to share the good news with first? Again, not who we would expect. They show up to shepherds. And these lowly shepherds, you know, you think about in this period of time, shepherds were considered so untrustworthy, they were not allowed to give a testimony in a court of law. It would be inadmissible as evidence. In fact, if you were a good, pious Jew, you would not buy milk or kids from shepherds. Now, when I say kids, I'm meaning goats. 
all right, not actual children. But you wouldn't buy those because you'd assume shepherds would go and disappear with flocks for months at a time. And so if they were coming and selling wool or kids or milk, it was just the assumption that they were stolen from the owner's flock. You know, a philosopher in Alexandria said this about shepherds. He says, there's no disreputable an occupation than that of a shepherd. They cannot be trusted. They are brute, thieving, deplorable men who prefer the company of animals and other men than they do community life. Biblical scholar Dwight Pryor says, the only people lower than shepherds at that particular time in Jewish history were lepers. Think about that. That is who God comes and shares this good news with first. The lowly shepherds. They, these shepherds were not even allowed in the temple. They handled animals. They are considered ceremonially unclean. And yet angels show up. And what do they tell the shepherds? They tell them, Today, in the city of David, a Savior was born for you, who is the Messiah, the Lord. So God chose to make this announcement to shepherds first. To the lowly, to the down and out, to the downtrodden. Aren't you so thankful that God doesn't discriminate? That his good news is available to all? The gospel to everyone, no matter who you are or what you've done. No matter your race, your age, your class, your gender. It's available to everyone. I'm so thankful for that good news this Christmas. And you think of this, look at the shepherd's initial reaction though. This is interesting. As the angel shows up, glory all around him. It says in verse 9, as the glory of the Lord shone around them, they were terrified. They were terrified. Now, why do you think these shepherds were so terrified? We have a bunch of men sitting around a campfire in the middle of a field. I'm just guessing. I've been in a few locker rooms. I'm guessing the conversation that they were having might not have been the most glorifying conversation to the Lord. And see, as we think about it, many times what we do when we think about our own lives is a lot of us think right away that, oh, like we're good. We're fine. We're good enough. We're, we compare ourselves to other people. Think about it this way. I have a daughter, four years old, Aviana. Now, I've been trying desperately. I think she's going to be tall, tall like me. I think I've been trying desperately to get her to play basketball. And you know what? I could invite her into a room. And I could set up her little Nerf goal. And you know what I could do? I could cross her over. I could break her, break her ankles. And I could dunk all over her. If you just compare me and my basketball skill to my daughter, Aviana, I am the greatest. And you know what? Compare my intelligence or my knowledge to her right now. Yeah, she might know her ABCs and have a few sight words. You know what? I can read the dictionary. I've got her beat down or put my bank account. I'm just a pastor, but compare it to her piggy bank and I'm feeling pretty good. And I could say, you know what? I'm great. But let's just say, in the middle of me crossing over my daughter and dunking on her, that LeBron James, that guy who forgot to invite me to, uh, to his birthday party, he comes walking in the door. And all of a sudden, my basketball skill doesn't look quite as good. All of a sudden, my bank account doesn't quite measure up. You just bring one person in, and I go from... Man, the biggest and the baddest is someone that could not even hold a candle to LeBron James and his skill. And you see, what God does when he shows up, his glory, first it exposes us. It exposes us for who we are. When Jesus comes onto the scene, see, when we try to compare ourselves to anyone else thinking that we're good enough, we look at Jesus who lived a perfect life and we realize we would never measure up. And his glory exposes us for who we really are. And that's what happens to the shepherd. They're terrified at first. But then look what the angel says. Don't be afraid. I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the city of David, 
a Savior was born for you who is the Messiah. God's glory does expose us. Show us that when we compare ourselves to the only one who matters, to God's perfect standard, none of us measure up. But after God's glory exposes us, we see that he sent his Savior to cover us, to cover our sin and our shame. And we can celebrate the birth of our Savior. It's good news that gives us great joy because Jesus came, born of a virgin, to live a perfect life. And to die the death that we all deserve. And so now when we talk about comparison, we have great joy because when God looks at us, he doesn't see our sin or our shame. When God looks at us, he sees us clothed in Christ's righteousness. What an incredible gift this Christmas that Jesus came to save us from our sins. So whether you're the highest of the high, or you're the lowest of the low, like these shepherds, this gift of Jesus is good news. It gives us great joy this Christmas season. Let's thank God for his son. This Christmas, I am thankful that Jesus Christ truly is the Savior to all. In the joyful moments, thank Him. In the busy moments, bless Him. In the trying moments, trust Him. In the quiet moments, praise Him. We hope that you have a Merry Christmas and we pray that you have a wonderful New Year.